So I was recently asked in another video if the three-stage rocket could actually get to the moon and back. And I wanted to show you in this video that it is actually possible. Now, the one little change I'm going to make on this rocket, though, is I'm going to add the landing legs to the top segment, simply because while I can land on the engine, it's not ideal, and I risk tipping over once I'm on the surface, given this is such a tall rocket. So other than that, let's fly this to the moon. One of the things you're going to notice here is that there's a little number in the top left of the screen. Now this is the suggested angle of attack for the rocket as it flies in order to reach orbit. It's not quite perfect, but it's close enough that unless you're really sipping fumes, you can easily get a rocket into orbit using this method. And you can see here that I follow it pretty close, although I will always err a little bit more then a little bit less. And the reason for this is because while we do want to get a lot of vertical velocity, horizontal velocity is actually more important as long as the rocket isn't obviously falling out of the air. Now there's a point between 12 and 15 kilometers height where you're generally going to have the rocket heat up. Now this is not a huge issue because the rocket can take quite a lot of temperature, but I know this is one where people get a little worried. Not to worry, we're going to push through this and we're going to get to our orbit. Now, once you reach the atmosphere, that number disappears and you're sort of left on your own. And this is where I think a lot of people run into trouble because they're not sure where to go from here. The trick actually is to get to about 35 kilometers at total height and then actually coast to the edge of the atmosphere and then turn the engine back on, basically trying to run parallel to the ground. You can see here that I am actually run out of the first stage and I'm going to release it and run on the second stage engine for most of the mission. Now, at a certain point, we're going to slowly expand out the orbit to the maximum of 40 kilometers. At this point, I'm going to time warp to 40 kilometers and basically run another burn until we get above 30 kilometers, which is the low Earth orbit uh, requirement. Now that we're in low Earth orbit, uh, we could take some time here to zoom out, uh, find the moon, set it as the target, and it's going to give us our transfer point. And very simply, we go to the transfer point, uh, we make sure the rocket is pointing in the forward prograde direction, and basically fire the engine until we get to it matching the line on the screen, which indicates that we are going to the moon. We're going to do a little bit of push and pull here to try to get as close to the moon as possible. We don't have to be absolutely perfect, but any little bit of energy we use here basically saves us a lot of fuel when we get there. Now we're passing close to the moon and obviously we're doing the exact opposite. We've now switched to retrograde, so we're firing in the reverse, ob reverse direction that we're actually flying in and we are burning at full power to basically bring us into a lunar orbit and we're going to make some adjustments here to try to get just above 5,000 meters, which is sort of the no, because below that 5,000 meters, we can't zoom anymore in the time warp. Once we've gotten here, we're going to dip below it and we're going to switch to the rocket view. And you can see here that we have the two velocity arrows. One of them is our horizontal velocity, which we need to significantly reduce down to zero. And the second one is our vertical velocity, which is basically how fast are we falling towards the moon? Ideally, we want to ensure that neither of these actually end up, that we do not hit the moon before we lose all our horizontal velocity. So we're going to angle the rocket in sort of a rough guess estimate, and we're going to burn the engine until either A, we run out of fuel in the secondary stage, or until we get close enough to the lunar orbit that I think that we don't want to use it anymore. And in this case, we actually have plenty of fuel here. So at about 500 meters, I'm going to drop the second stage. Yeah, there's a bit of fuel in there we could have used to save on the mission, but I didn't want to try to land on the engine, as I stated before, because that would end up potentially having the rocket lean left and right. And since we don't have any RCS uh, thrusters on this rocket, it's very hard to correct without doing some wild crazy flying and most likely when you hear wild crazy flying explosions follow so here we are we're slowing down and basically we're just trying to land on the moon ideally we want to land as flat as possible um, that simply is because we want to ensure that we're good to go 
um, and we don't tip over. And voila, here we are on the moon. Um, and similar here, we're going to launch the rocket into orbit. The main trick here is that we want to get to about 5,000 meters and then basically do the same stunt as we did on Earth. However, since there, again, there's no atmosphere, we could actually orbit the moon at about 200 to 275 meters out of super very low orbit. I have another video where I've done that. Um, but you have to be a little bit careful on that one because the moon isn't actually completely uh, flat and round on all sides and you could easily clip a outcropping or a crater. Now that we're again in low lunar orbit, we can use the same trick as we did before, selecting the Earth as a target and it's given to give us a return velocity. Pretty simple. We time warp to the transfer point and we burn prograde until we get to line up with the Earth. Now since we're coming back from the moon, our velocity is going to be slow enough that we don't have to worry about the heat shield overheating. We don't actually need to do a retro burn once we're close to the Earth to slow down, but if you are going over say two and a half thousand meters per second, I would highly recommend that you do slow down as much as possible because you don't want to hit the atmosphere too fast because you can actually burn the heat shield. Although one thing I will mention is we do need to get rid of this last stage. So it is just the capsule, the heat shield, and the parachute on top um, that enters the atmosphere. I generally recommend this before we hit 35 kilometers because if you release it in the atmosphere or you release it too soon, depending on the angle and everything else that's going on, I've seen the second, the last stage actually fly back into the capsule and destroy the heat shield. And then you just have a capsule and you'd be in trouble. So that's it. Um, it's going to fly down here. Um, at this point, it's pretty semantic. Uh, open the parachute at some point, and you're going to nicely land on the ground. And thus, we show that the three-stage sample rocket in Space Flight Simulator, it is possible to the moon and back with, with just a little modification to make it easier. But obviously, if you want to give it a try and land on that engine, by all means, have fun. Thanks for watching.